Hello, everybody. I am awake and I don't want to be because I couldn't shut my brain off. I think I know how Strawberry works. I'm not even kidding. So if you're not familiar, Strawberry has been all the rage. Q-Star, Strawberry, the leaks from OpenAI. Now, the rumor has it right now, and of course, just rumor. We'll see if it gets walked back. But they're talking about how Strawberry can solve complex math problems. But then there's also talk about synthetic data and that synthetic data will be used to train Project Orion. Now, something stuck out to me when they're talking about having solved uh, the generation of synthetic data. So next, I want to point out, I was talking about synthetic data over two years ago. So I was using GPT-3 to synthesize data to create synthetic data sets for fine tuning. The reason I'm sharing this, it's not a flex. I mean, it is a little bit of a flex, but I'm pointing out that like I have been working on this for a while. Um, and I've also been sharing this. You see, this is the OpenAI forum. I've been sharing it openly for a while as well. So that's one thing is just keep in mind synthetic data. It's something that I'm actually a world leading expert in. Um, and then I want to talk about latent space activation. So latent space activation, um, basically what we realized is that if, uh, all right, here's, here's another way to think about it. You train these models on gigantic data sets, and there's a lot of embedded knowledge, even if it's not fully crystallized. And so what I mean by crystallized is it knows things, but it has to assemble them. And this is very similar to how human brains work, is that um, have you ever had a conversation where someone is asking you about something that you know a lot about, but they ask you a question that you haven't really thought of before, and then at that time of instantiation, you kind of connect all the dots, and then you say, then you spit something out and you're like, wow, I knew more about that than I thought that I did. That's what latent space activation is. That's the equivalent of what latent space activation is for uh, large language models. And I was working on this 10 months ago um, and I made videos about it as well. So that data is out there. So next, what I wanna show you is how I think Strawberry works at a very high level, just using a generic example on Claude. And the reason that I think that I know how it works is because I was working on this in my startup that I ultimately didn't go anywhere 18 months ago. So I'm getting really excited now. At the startup that I was working on, I was developing a concept that I called surface plate. Surface plate would have been a combination of three models. So you'd have the generator or the, the expert, then you'd have the interrogator um, which is basically asking the, the expert model, what do you know about this? And then you'd have a grader, which would be a third model that would grade the quality of output. You can do all this with chatbots now. So in this first one, imagine that instead of me asking this question, this is a, this is a chatbot that is fine-tuned or just instructed to interrogate the expert model and extract all of the information out of it to, to create that latent space activation saying, I know you know about this at a very deep level. Now tell me everything you know about it to crystallize it. Now you might remember the uh, the paper that Philip covered over on AI Explained, textbooks are all you need. What we found is that synthetic data, when it is highly curated, is actually much more efficient at training these models. So that's all the theory behind it. So in this first example, I said, tell me everything you know about physics at a high level. Um, we will iteratively drill into topics, yada, yada, yada. And so then, uh, Claude happily generates the top 10 uh, uh, categories of physics. And then I say, excellent, unpack fundamental forces and particles, because that was the first one. So by recursively searching through the data, remember what QSTAR does is it's a, 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 apparently a recursive search algorithm. Now, what I'm not quite sure on is, is how this would cover math. So I'm probably missing something, but at least I know how to generate synthetic data. And if you have enough tokens, you can recursively generate or, or, or synthesize or you know, do latent space activation for all of human knowledge in these models and you can distill it and then also make new connections. So fundamental forces and particles, it started with just uh, three bullet points. And then in the next chat, and remember, you like this does not take much intelligence to interrogate it again. So you could very easily fine tune another model to just uh, be the interrogator. And it says, certainly. So then it unpacks more about fundamental forces. 
Um, and so then uh, let's just, I'll show you again. It's like, okay, gravity is the first one. So I'm recursively going through just basically a binary search tree. Um, tell me everything you know about gravity. <laughs> and away we go. So again, it does not take that much intelligence to interrogate and activate and, and create those latent space activations. And then what it's doing is it's synthesizing information. And so then what you do is then you take it to the third model. And so in this case, um, I said, you're a grader of data. I will give you a bit of text and you will grade it with a rubric. What we found a long time ago is that, and lots of people independently discovered this, by the way, is that language models are really good at discriminating. So you have a generator and a discriminator, but in this case we have an expert, an interrogator, and a discriminator. They're really good at grading each other with rubrics, um, particularly if you tell it how to grade it and on what criteria. Now, I didn't give it uh, a full rubric, so a full rubric would be grade one is this, grade two is this, grade three is this. Um, but I gave it the first sample, and I said, you know, there are four, uh, this is copied from the other uh, conversation. And it gave it a five out of five, um, which I would I would say it's close. I would say it's not particularly comprehensive. Um, and so the reason that you do this is because as you're generating samples, you want to grade all of them and you just basically discard the bottom n percent of the samples so that you're constantly refining your 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 synthesized data set to be the highest quality information. So um, next sample. Whoops. Sorry, fat fingered that. All right, there we go. Okay, so that's the next sample. And we're gonna watch it grade it. Um, and again, it graded at five out of five. I could see some room for improvement, um, but when you have basically, you're, you're basically recursively writing a textbook of everything that humans know. That is, that is what I think Strawberry does is by by using these models that have already been trained on all text data across the entire world, they know everything that humans know, whether or not they know it and whether or not it has been trained in them well. So by recursively generating a textbook and you have the expert that is saying, okay, I'm writing the, the base text, and then you have the interrogator that's saying, okay, tell me what you know about that. And then you have a third model that is saying, okay, cool, that was well written or maybe not. And you could do this with, I could imagine there might be several more fine-tuned models. Uh, you might have one that is reformatting it. So actually, let's do this as an experiment. Um, so I will create another chat and I say, okay, uh, your purpose is to write um, uh, textbooks, uh, textbook sections based on the data I give you. Um, write comprehensively. Um, at the highest intellectual level, uh, whoops, uh, domain expert, um, expound upon the um, base information I give you with all the uh, knowledge you possess on the topic. So then there might be a fourth model, which is just, this is just the drafter. And so let's see what it does. Um, certainly I'd be happy to blah, 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 blah. And then, uh, actually it's Claude, so it's generating an artifact. So here we have it. It's actually generating the chapter for us. This is how I would, if, if I had the money and the time and the, uh, and the, and the compute time, if you asked me, said, Hey Dave, use latent space activation and create me a fine tuning data set that is going to be like one data set to rule them all. Um, this is how I would do it, is I would uh, use these models to iteratively basically generate one textbook to rule them all, um, is how I would approach this. And you see how, how far this is going and how fast? Imagine that you have a whole bunch of instances of Claude or GPT-4 or whatever working in parallel to iter iteratively unpack literally every domain of human knowledge. That is what I think OpenAI is doing, and that, if I'm correct, that is how they are training GPT-5 or GPT-6, we're not sure. Um, now, and again, like I said, the one part that's missing is I'm not sure how they would have solved math, um, unless they did the same thing where they basically asked a generator saying, hey, write out this latex formula 
and and figure out how to how to logically you know unpack this or something along those lines. I might make another video if I figure that out. But yeah, I hope you got a lot out of this. Um, I could be wrong, but as someone who's been fine tuning models since GPT two, this is how I would approach it. So cheers. <laughs>